I just recently pulled this car out of storage that I've had for a long time. And I'm gonna see if I can get her running. This is a 1974 Saab Sonat 3, not a two, it's a three. It's actually a super unique car. I can't wait to show you guys this thing. And it's actually fairly rare. They only made 2,483 of these and I happened to snag on one a while back. It's powered by a Ford Taunus V4 backed by a four speed. Yep, I said V4. How's your brain now? It was last plated in Kentucky in 1992, I believe, which is 29 years ago. Think about that for a minute. Whew. Place your bets just as long as they're not on me. What's your least favorite part of shaving? Mine is the dang old cost. I mean, it's more than an oil change, and I ain't kidding you. Them refill things, them are expensive. Guy likes to keep the old punching bags and jaw curtain nice and tidy, but I've been slacking recently because it's so expensive. That was until I found Harry's. You can get set up for as little as two bucks, or you could try their trial kit for free as long as you just pay $3 shipping. You could do that by going to harrys.com forward slash vice grip. I got a trial package here. Let's crack that open and just see, I don't know, let's, look, let's see what's in it. Let's see what we got. Hi there, well hello. We started Harry's to make shaving better. Well, so far I trust you. Everything you need for a smooth shave. Got a nice little bag here. Let's see what we got. This must be the actual razor here. Let's pop her open. Wow, pretty fancy looking. She's got some heft to her actually. One, two, three, four, five blades on this. Goodness gracious. We got some shave gel. Well, I don't know. Let's give this a shot. See what we got going on. A little bit of blade prep, you know. Yeah, we're good to go. On second thought, I think I'm gonna use this provided shave gel. They're using words like foam and rich lather and glide and smooth. Hydrates, nice, right? So I think I'm gonna give this a shot. You know, other than the old cost thing, the other thing a feller doesn't have enough of is the old times. So you gotta use what you got, right? I mean, it foams right now, like a lot. Their claims of being sharp, Completely true. Well, you fellers know that usually it hurts like heck digging into the old smile maker cold, but not today. I got her done out here and them blades is sharp and I ain't kidding you. And that shave gel, it's smooth and creamy, made shaving super easy. This is a no brainer. I'm switching to Harry's, honestly. It just makes sense. Get your trial set for just three bucks. You can go to harrys.com forward slash vice grip or just click the link down in the description. Can't get any easier than that. And thanks to Harry's for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the Saab. I picked this thing up such a long time ago that I don't even remember all the details. She's a little foggy on a guy. I think it was east of Minnesota. No, south or north. Anyway, I remember it was a long drive. It was eight or nine hours to get there. And we just decided this is trailer this thing home. The guy did say for sure that there was no clutch in the thing. And I just wasn't sure what I was getting into and if I was gonna be able to drive it home or not. The big thing was just finding parts, you know, cause it's a Saab. You know, a lot of people don't have parts for Saabs on the shelf. So we just thought we'd throw it in storage and save her for a rainy day. Edit, save her for a cloudy, not rainy day. So I don't know, we're just gonna jump into this thing. I know absolutely nothing about this engine or transmission or rear end or car in general at all. Never owned one. In fact, I don't think I've ever even seen one of these before. Not sure how the controls work. Electrical is definitely something I've never messed with before. Everything's gonna be fine. 
And I think we're just, we're going to fire it up, is what I'm saying. So let's take a walk around this thing. I'm learning with you. I literally have not looked through this car. I have not dug through it or anything. We pulled it on the trailer. We rolled it off. I pushed it into this shop. And this is the first time that I'm digging into it. So I don't have a whole lot of history on this rig here other than it came from Kentucky previously. Maybe that's where I got it from. I can't remember. And like most cars that are rare or hard to find, unfortunately, when you see them up for sale, it's typically an estate sale or there's health issues involved. And this was no different. Unfortunately, the previous owner had terminal cancer. And not only did I pay the asking price, I actually paid more than the asking price. His friend was selling it for him. He was super helpful, really kind. He also didn't know a lot about the car, but he went out of his way to make sure that all the paperwork was put together that he had. It's somewhere in the car. I'm assuming a glove box. Well, there is a glove box. Boy, they have tiny gloves. That's really all I know about it. It does have a title, which is really cool. So I can do something with this eventually. Not quite sure yet if I'm going to keep it and just stick it in the collection or if I'm eventually gonna sell it. I know one thing for sure, I am not fitting in this thing. There is, there's just, it's not, there's no physical way that this is, I can't drive it is what I'm saying. So that's kind of unfortunate, I ain't gonna fit in the thing, but I'm super happy to own the thing. It's actually really cool. It marks a really neat era in Saab history. They made a lot of changes from the Saab 2 to Saab 3 to start marketing these in the United States. So let's take a look around the thing. We'll jump into the, normally I say trunk. I think this is a hatch, coupe, the bonnet, the boot. I'm not sure. It's the back end of the car is what I'm saying back here. We'll dig through there. I already see tires and there's some sort of like entry mat or something in there. We'll dig through the interior. Then we'll take a look at this V4. You guys are gonna like that thing. I know I did. So the hatch doesn't have a key lock. It's actually operated by this handle right there. And that'll pop the hatch. At first glance, here's what we're cooking with. We got two brand new BS Good Riches in here. White letter, like that. Got a car cover, foamage, some sort of mats and other fixings. The ad said four brand new tires. I didn't ask, and I guess he didn't specify in his defense. That means two mounted, two in the hatch, and two old ones that go flat 18 hours. 22.3 hours respectively this one up here is really bad i mean you can literally hear the wind coming out of that guy that's okay we'll just keep putting goop in it anywho let's get back to here got some tires these are what are these 155 80 15s i think these are the same size that are on independent chevelle but just for perspective there's a the guy's hand right there. Get these out of the way. Yep, yep. Ooh. Remember some nice mats? Look at this here. Some sort of woven mat. Driver's side. Got to have the heelage for the women's heels, you know. Oh, here we go. Whole bunch of paperwork. Let's take a look at this. The Saab Sport, the newsletter of Milwaukee Saab Club. It's kind of neat, a lot of people don't know this. The name Saab and a lot of the styling was influenced by aircraft and military aircraft. It's kind of a neat read if you look into it. Here's the car here, it looks like some sort of magazine article maybe. Had reference drawn on it, marker. Man, I love cars with the paperwork. It's just so neat, all the history. Parts warehouse. Hey, we might have plates. Oh, we do have plates. Wisconsin plates, okay. So it went from Kentucky to Wisconsin. Wisconsin must be where I got it from, I would assume. More Saab stuff there, a bunch of receipts. Registration, that's Kentucky registration. Here's the title and registration from 1992. The guy paid $200 for this rig. More license renewal stuff and state of Wisconsin. 
So that makes sense. I must have got it from Wisconsin. So it came over the pond, went to Kentucky, ended up in Wisconsin. Now she's in Minnesota. What else we got? This looks like the floor thingy. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay, come on now. Get out of there. All right. Plywood, that's worth more than a car these days. Some sort of crispy mat thing. That must be the rear mat. Front passenger floor card. That makes that the driver. Front carpets. Wow, that's neat. I thought I was gonna have to try to search and buy that stuff, but they were in the car. That's really cool, actually. This must be for, I would assume this hung in the back and had, I don't know, there's stuff in it. It's a bag thing, right? And, oof, ooh, Concore speakers. Them look like them 15 watt units. I stand corrected. They're 12 watts, whatever. Still get some orangey out of those. That must have been, you know, back here. Oh, we got more literature. Look at that. Shop manual. Guy could use this. Very cool. I'm going to throw that up there. By the way, I have the keys. There's like 48 keys. I think two ignition sticks, actually. That's rare for me. Look at that. Original owner's manual. Shoot, too bad it sat in there all crooked-like. We'll see if we can bring that back around. Look at that, original spare. All be dipped. What is this thing? What does this do? Where does this go? That doesn't look like it fits in this car at all. We'll get that over there. All right. Rust. Whoa. Actually, not bad. Is that where the battery goes? Back here? No. Well, it's gotta be. I'm looking right at it, but what a dumb spot. What is this thing? What have we got? What is this? Not sure. There's no, like, there's gotta be something missing here, like a battery box or something, but... Apparently that's where that goes. So what brand is this tire is what I'm curious about at this juncture. And I can't, oh, here we go. Pavali, is that a thing, Pavali? I don't know. Maybe that's like a Goodyear. Really unique tread on it. Almost looks like a motorcycle tire, doesn't it? We got anything on this side? Oh, it's a Firestone, okay. All right, not as quirky as I thought, I guess. But no huge rust holes, no rust in here. So far, structurally, it's really intact. Look at these little mini roll bars in here. The struts to the hatch glass in her. So the styling of this car, I really, really like. It's just got such a neat look to it. And these quarter panels and the sail panel, I'm just, this part here, it's just, I'm digging it a lot. Just this nice, bold kind of hump here. Looks really cool in the mirror. Kind of like the 944 Porsches. Uh, this also looks like the 250s, 269er, 220Zs, 240Z, whatever it is. I don't know. Kind of that coupish, hatchbackish, quarter panel, swoopish kind of car. Really cool looking. Good. That I know of had to be designed specifically for the V4 Ford engine to fit the air cleaner and the fuel make it happener. That also kind of killed some of the design, but really what took the design down with these bumpers. Look at that thing. It's really too bad. The Sunet 1 and the Sunet 2s didn't have these big bumpers. When they brought the car over to America, that I understand, they had to add these big crash bumpers on here front and rear and that really took away from the styling it just kind of killed that sporty fast look and of course they moved the driver from right hand to left hand and the other thing they did was move the shifter from the column to the center console but look there's still a right hand fuel 
Maybe. Come on now. I just... Is it stuck or is it frozen? Or do I need a key? There we go. That comes off really easy. So it still had a right hand fill because it used to be a right hand drive. Overall, the styling of this car is just super neat, but it's really tiny. I mean, it is a very, very small car. I mean, look at it on the lift. This is halfway through one ramp. This tire is about to fall in, actually. It's a very, very small car. Pretty petite. Nice little quarter glass here. Look at the venting. I mean, the style of this car is definitely there. A little scoop up here behind the bulge in the hood. These are supposed to operate by some sort of lever and they'll flip up like that. Even the front grille was a really unique design. It's simple, but I don't know a word. Charming? Sure. Let's go with that. Let me clean up this paperwork really quick and then we'll jump inside and check out the interior. Door handle's neat. This is a little push button here. And if you swing this up, that's where you get your key in her. And then you got the old handle scoop. Wow, that's better than I remember it being. It's almost like a Buick. Huh. Ooh, that's right now. It's like mothballs and hot dog water. Oof da. Here's the plate here. It says September of 73, so they roll her over to a 74, of course. 3440 GVWR. Kind of a neat latch system. And look at this, there's also a alignment latch on the bottom here. It's always kind of cool to see different engineering. Like look at the seat belt, for example. It's just a belt. There's no latch or anything. And then you bring it over here, drop it into this, lock her in. I'll be dipped. Got the old lumbar supports in the seat here. Pretty comfortable seats they look like. I've never sat in them, but they look like it. What do we got for weight reduction? Oh, standard issue crunch. Not too bad. Firewall portion looks solid. Feels solid. You can see the clutch and the brake hinge down here on the same bar. That feels way too loose. Of course, that's locked up. Perfect. Got wires hanging down. Looks important. If you're wondering if these are the brake lines running on the inside of the car, you're correct. And also, is that the main battery wire? Yep. Also correct. Looks like the bottom of the column is missing here. This is really cool. Watch this, if it works. Oh yeah. We got lightage, negative lightage, lightage again. So I think you pull this out and then you got a juice on them. Whoops, that's busted. There used to be a knob here and I think that pulls out like that. That's how you get the lights on. Kind of a dainty stick there, but pretty neat little dash. Smart looking, some would say. Oh, we got a cassette player. Looks original. CL lips, not sure. Some temperature stuff. What do we got in the ashtray? Uh, negative ashage. Has she been smoked in before? Doesn't look like it. Temperature maybe. Four speed, look at reverse, down and back. Oh, that's... Shift knob is missing in this car. But anyway, the shifter. Shifter, is there something wrong there? Not gonna pull the e-brake. Well, that's pretty much it for this side. It's really, it's exciting. There's a lot going on. Let me get over there. Oh no, she's stuck alized. Come on out. Oh, there we go. Just gotta juice that up a little bit maybe. I think this is a car cover. Could be wrong. Let's tread lightly here. What have we got? What's in it? Okay, safe. Oh, we got partage. Wow. Oh, cool. Here's that column piece. That's good. What else we got? Headlightage. Miniature man dude thing. Need that. These are actually fuses, fellas, for a Saab, believe it or not. 
try to get a hold of these. You won't. What is that? Oh, look at this. That's cool. Air cleaner lid. I was looking for that for 55 months on eBay. Windshield wipers and a blade refill. I'll be dipped. That's the uh, fuse panel cover. Fuse panel should be back under there. Yeah, there it is up there. So we can put this back on. Heater fan, sig light, spotlight, indicator, stop lamp, instrument light, backup light, horn, relays, instrument feed, wiper, washer. Standard issue. Miscellaneous trim things. More carpet. What is this? A shift knob replacement topper do dabber thing. This one doesn't say six speed. So we're gonna keep this off and we'll leave the one that's on it. That's a real emblem, I believe. Another bag thing. I don't know if these went, no, that's not right. Not quite sure there. I'll slide this down here for now, I guess. There's a couple speed holes. We got an ankle vent up here, but nothing too bad. This is one license plate, cut it in half, two patches, piece of cake. But I mean, other than that, it's actually a pretty solid car. I mean, other than the smell, this should clean up pretty good. Probably shouldn't pull this here, it'll get stuck. Anyway, what's in the glove box up here? Nothing. Oh, we got something up here. Tire pressures. Vehicle capacity. 455 pounds. Well, that's pretty much it for the interior. Pretty neat little time capsule in here. It's been, uh, I think, taken care of, to be honest. It's not too bad. It's unfortunate about the floors. Not sure. I don't think that came from Kentucky. It might have been a couple of years in Wisconsin. But, I mean, even the door cards, these are going to clean up really, really well. What is this? Not sure. Callahan. Okay. We're going to lift it up a little bit. We'll take a closer look at the body here. And then we'll get that hood open and take a look at this V4. So what's really nice about this car here is 97.23% is that glass of fiber. See? Listen. And then of course the frame or the structure of it is, that's where the rate reduction is going to come in. And this side is pretty pristine. There's a little bit of paint bubbling back here, but it's nothing that goes through. So I mean this side is pretty much perfect, there's really no body damage. And I believe this is still the original paint. We can kind of see some of that up here. There's some, you can see the fiberglass and then there's a brown primer and then the one coat of black. And I've looked really close at this through all the different chips and the paint, but I'm thinking a nice clay bar or even a wet sand and a buff would really bring this black paint right back around. She'd shine up pretty good actually. There is a ton of chips, I mean, all over this thing. Really bad on this side. But it would still be a nice 27 footer, you know, come out of Walmart. Dang, what's that thing? So we got a little rot down here. Technically, this is part of the frame, so you just ignore it, right? Scoop some of this out. That's fine. Not bad up here. So that's really it. I got some sort of hit or something there cracked the paint but the fiberglass is okay here's that plate you can see kentucky 1992 but more importantly we got dual x host and this is true dual gentlemen look at this you can see both music laters running down here this v4 pumped out 60 65 horsepower and i ain't kidding you that's real it happened and then of course these big old 185s just jammed them right to the highway. Rear end of the car is in really good shape. Luckily the lenses aren't knocked out. There's no damage back here, I think at all. Got all the reflectors and everything. It's actually a really complete car. Got pretty lucky with all that. Side marker lights in it there. 
The fact that the headlights still operate when you pull that lever, that's a big plus. Got the turn signals in the front. So if this thing runs, we got a heck of a car here, fellas, and I ain't kidding you. I think we'll go ahead and bring it up just a little bit higher. Might as well walk underneath this thing, check it out real quick. And then we'll bring it back down and take a look at that engine. Something I forgot to mention earlier is this is actually a front wheel drive. And it's going to bottle your mind up how they jammed all this in here. One of the needs for that bulge in the hood is this little V4 had to be so far forward to get the transmission, the CV shafts, and the oil pan in here. This one's been clobbered on pretty good but look how tight this thing is just jammed in here and also up here this was kind of neat notice this right away the license plate i don't know if they made any changes from the two to the three but the plate was still up in here kind of behind the bumper i think they literally just had rob down in the basement figure out how to put a bumper on and they just jammed that on and went with it this doesn't look like a very goodish design there seeing a bunch of wire connections already which is not good we got an h pipe oh my goodness really pulling the hps out right underneath the lower control arms and you want to talk about straight pipes gentlemen i mean i've never seen the likes in my life look at this just straight back some sort of mufflator we got some trailer house rough seam patch in here just slothered in that's fine i mean just get it out of there and no one will know it's missing this floor up here looks pretty decent though cd boot looks fine there this one's clearly leaking but it looks to be decent-ish got a heck of an oil leak somewhere you know up in this region not really sure where oil filter must be a side mount up on that engine i don't see anything down here here's that rust through the floorboard on the captain's side that might be kind of a bugger to fix because this is pinch welded all the way around through here you see that good glad we're on the same page and then these guys just kind of freewheel back here dainty little trailing arm some sort of swivel later up here with a bushing. Looks neat. Kind of basic actually in the rear end to be honest. You know, I can't confirm because I just don't know. But I think this is a mount for the jack. If you're replacing a tire, that jack clicks into here. And that's how you, you know, jack her up. Could be wrong. But if there's any Sabe fans out there, let me know. They're on all four corners, and that's just what a guy is assuming on. But you know what they say about assuming. What is this? Four-wheel drive locker? Boop. Boop. Oh, that was to the wheel, not the grill. Probably shouldn't touch these tires. This top's not that bad of shape, to be honest. She's a little melty through here. I'm not quite sure what happened. But other than that, I mean... This should come back around. Stitching is still in it up here. Huh. Let's take a closer look under the bonnet here and see if this thing has any potential at all to actually run. Oh, well, at first glance, I give it about a 73.42% chance. Missing some parts. Fairly complete though. Hmm. Needs an oil change, definitely. What a odd looking little engine. I got some emotions going on right now. I'm confused, I wanna laugh, and I just don't understand, but I like it. It's like when Longmire answered that cell phone call out there in the pasture. What was going on? Well, look at this little fella. Isn't that something else? It's not often you see these guys. It's a little V4. And this is a larger displacement than previous years, I believe, but it's the same horsepower, about 60, 65. But you can see the transmission there and then the CV axles. Oh, speaking of which, that one's shot. At least the boot is completely missing on it. But first quick glance, all the lightning equipment is missing. 
lightning cap and whirler. Hoses are gone. We got some old crusty plugs in it, looks like. Coils in it, but we've got, looks like some updated wiring going on in a lot of places. Some twist knots, not really sure what was going on. More fuses here, no idea what those do, so we'll just ignore them. This must be to the fuel tank. That's just been plugged off with a bolt and uh, we've got no connection here down to the pump. I hope that doesn't mean the pump is bad. We can probably run her on a clicky clacky, but we're gonna have to search for one of those if it is bad. Everything else is here though. I mean, it's got a starter and all the wiring seems to be fairly intact. Over here are the juice jugs. No idea which is which. One of these is going to be for the clutch master and then the brake master, which are conveniently tucked way down there. Neither one you can readily get to. The speedometer cable is just clean snapped off. Not quite sure what happened there. Got some meltage here. That must be the blinking eye pump. This is kind of a wonky design. It's the ice cube log radiator filler upper 9000 device slash throttle linkage holder upper 200 ran through here. Speaking of which, that moves. Doesn't look too bad, actually. Well, one side moves. Other side's locked up. I'm sure the accelerator pump is shot too. I'll try to free that up, but this is good. Just runs on a rod system. Off a little hinge there, straight into the cab. So normally I like to try to make these fire off a little bit so I at least know they run before I start throwing money at them. This one needs quite a few parts though before we get to that point. So let me grab my eye plate, wherever that went. Hopefully it's charged. And we'll make a list. Oh yeah, she's fully charged. Uh, all lightning equipment. Better get some sparkulators here. I think I got a battery we can use temporarily. Better get a belt just in case. Get some Earl. What if it runs? Mazel well get it. Get an Earl filter. What else? We had an air filter, looked brand new. Don't need that. Hmm. Wonder if they'd have a carb kit. I don't know, they probably would. But let's just wait, keep the cost down real quick. Well, I guess the guy's gonna fire down to O'Reilly and snag up some parts and, I don't know, I'll just bring you with this time. Something different, I guess. Hello. Good. Good, anything you hope to find? Uh, just picking up that stuff for call about. Oh, sure. You got it right garage. over here. Awesome. While he's pulling that, I'll show you guys some stuff here quick. One of the most common questions I get on the social medias is where do I get all the little tools and stuff I use? So a majority of the stuff, like, like the sparkulator tester, I use this guy all the time. They got a couple different flavors. Those are nice to have. This is a flaring tool that I use all the time for the brake lines. Ball joint tools, I carry those. This little mini tube cutter has been really handy. Uh, that's also where I picked this up. And then there's a gear puller on here. Guy's gotta have that in his toolkit. But basically a majority of the stuff that I have on revivals comes from this wall. And then down here on an end cap, so this is where I get those hose clamps with the little fungalators on it. They're just easier than trying to dig out a screwdriver or something like that. And then vacuum caps down here. And they also have this nice case that I carry too. And it's a couple different sizes. Then if you're in a hurry, snag on some different size hose up there. And then of course, got all my Wix filters that I like. Here's my Rotella section. We got it on sale here, the T6. It's a good price. Of course, I got my Berryman, four sixty nine a can, awesome price. Battery, probably my favorite section, performance wall. This is where I get my clicky clackies, a lot of my carburetor studs, stuff like that. 
And these are the filters. Some stores have them on the end caps. This one's here, but this prime line, I just buy these as much as possible. They work great in cars, actually, even though they're a small engine. I use them a lot. Okay, well, it looks like they got my stuff ready, so get paid up and let's get back to the shop and get this thing running. That was pretty slick. They had all these parts in stock. I think I'm just going to start with the lightning system only. Make sure this thing fires off before I throw too much time and money at it. And then I got to figure out the firing order here. I have a pretty good idea. I mean, it's just a V4 on a 180. So it's probably going to be what I would call one, two, four, three. But I'm going to get out the manual that came in this car, wherever that went, find it. I put it somewhere. It's around here. Firing order's got to be in that thing, right? Well, I'll be dipped. Very first page, a crack open. V4 firing order. 1342 is what the book says, which is exactly what I was thinking in my brain. But Ford does their cylinder identification different. So I was going off of captain side would be one, two, drinker side, three, four. Where Ford is, for whatever reason, the drinker side is one, two, three, four around this way. So one, three, four, two, this will help us dial that in. Looks like idle speed is 800. We got plug gappage in here as well. Looks like, where's it at? I just found it, didn't I? Oh, here it is. For some reason it changes a little bit. About 25, give or take, which is a hard squint. It's like that. It's pretty much gap. This is actually going to be a really useful book to have around. Mechanical fuel injection system. Mm -mm. Don't like that. The old lightning whirler here is the size of a pudding cup. Throw the whirler in. Checking out the points in here, the contacts, they actually look fairly decent. I'm going to save the five bucks and not put those in. And hopefully we don't need them. I might run some emery cloth through there or something if we need to, but I like to try to get these running with minimal amount of new parts if possible. Okay. Might have made a mistake here. Typically, I like to see if these engines even rotate a full rotation, but I got a little antsy with this one. Plus, it's been sitting in dry storage for the majority of the time that it's been sitting since 92, so I don't know. It's a long time, but it should be okay, hopefully. I'm gonna finish putting the lightning hoses on it, then we'll lift her up, and we'll put a ratchet on the crank here and see if this thing even rotates a full rotation. If something gets stuck along the way or it could even be locked up, then plan C, D, F, J, and R. Great. What was that firing order again? Eight, three, six, one, niner. Pretty sure. Got this all buttoned up. I don't know where this is currently at in its rotation, so I guessed on TDC. We'll see. 25% chance. I'm right. These... Lightning hoses have been in here a long time. At least, well, this one's off the coil, but look how brittle that is too. So it's been a long time since she's been played with. But hopefully this thing still spins over. Look at that tiny little fan back there. Actually, I wonder if I can... Oh, it's just spinning. It's slipping on the belt. So yeah, we'll get her up and see if we can get this to crank over. Yeah, the crank pole is right here in a guy's mouth. They really squeeze this thing in here. I think this might be an 11 forward slash 16. Yep, there we go. Oh, okay, yep. Turns over, about as easy as a lawnmower engine. Let's make sure we get a full rotation. Oh, very easy. Well, that's good. Should be fine. I just don't know if I'm gonna be successful or not, but while I got her up here, that starter is jammed into my left ear. Might as well try to get the Lone Wolf 6000 rigged up. 
it's going to be a lot easier from the bottom and then I'll just swing her up top but may or may not work. I think it's got spade connectors and some sort of advanced engineering on it. Well guys verified this battery is bad about 15 times but I've yelled at it quite a bit and I've been boiling it on boost for about three weeks so, so I don't know maybe it's brand new now. Such a weird, dangerous battery setup. I like it. Now, do's the keys, do's the key things. Got lights on the dash. Nothing. Huh. Got no crankage, but I'll at least test for 12 V's over there on the lightning can. And if we're good there, we'll just keep going on. Otherwise, I dug out the Lone Wolf 9000. She's got a digital pump and ignition control on board. Well, I've got her rigged in here. And this should work fine. And then I can run the digital fuel pump if I need. Or my ignition off these leads here. But being the key is on, and I did test, we got some V's over there. Should be able just to hit this button and it cranks. There we go. Awesome. So that's great news. Starter works. Seems to be rolling over just fine. Quiet little bugger. Before we get her fired, I want to get this other barrel operating over here. I did get it cracked open, but now she's stuck there. So I think I'm going to get some sort of juice and soak this down and just sit here and work this back and forth. We want to get all the HPs out of this thing. Back in there a little bit, maybe. Might as well just get everything in here, right? Or in here. Some over here. That thing. I don't think that needs any. We'll put it on it anyway. Now what do we got? It's definitely going open, but she's still locking up. Which, being locked wide open isn't a bad thing. It's just maybe not on a test fire, you know. Now what have we got? Uh, not quite there. Hey. I think we got her. Pew. Today's flavor of Firemaker is I believe this was drained out of the 777 fuel cell, smelled like deck stain. And then I added about four Ozzy Osbournes of two-stroke oil. You really, really want to avoid spraying engines with carb cleaner and brake cleaner, unless you're really in a jam. It's not good for them. The little bit of two-stroke oil will help lubricate the cylinders up a little bit, just in case she doesn't run. Whoa, that's way too much. Perfect. Well, is there anything else left to do? Nope. That wasn't very exciting. We might not have spark. Oh, maybe a timing issue? Well, it's definitely got compression. I can hear that, which is great. Fired a couple times. I'm going to put this on TDC super quick and just double check my firing order and then we'll try this again. Boy, a couple times she fired off there, it really put out some smoke. I did confirm the firing order and I also made sure that lightning whirlers pointed at the right lightning hose here. I did add a skosh of timing, you know, by the ear meter. Something wasn't right there. Also, maybe I didn't give it enough fuel. I thought I flooded it, but I got my fuel fetalizer 44 here, and now we can just continually squirt some gas in here. Now we can modulate the fire maker right here. 
I don't know, we'll try it again, see what happens. Throttle edge. There we go. It fired really smoky. I didn't hear any valve train noise or nothing. Let's try her again. I'd like to get it to run just for a couple seconds here. There we go. Nice. Really, really smoky. Sounds pretty good though. Valve train isn't clacking, there's no knocking. Yes, we got a runner. Lightning whirler's wobbling around. She must be pretty tight in there. Hey, this thing's a runner, sounds great. It's smoking like crazy, but that's to be expected. Those rings might be kind of stuck in there, but man, that sounded pretty good. All right, well, I guess, I don't know, this changed the oil. Now I'm really excited. Let's get that changed so we could try to run it a little bit longer. And then, you know, lastly, brakes, clutch. You don't need them to drive it anyway. Another reason I don't want to run it too much longer here is I don't know if it was building any oil pressure. I couldn't scoot in the cab there and read on the gauge. But an easy way we could tell is when we spin this oil filter off that no one can reach, if it's full of oil already, then we know that it was building pressure and starting to circulate that. This filter looks like it's from the 80s. Maybe we'll be able to tell. Hopefully it's not torqueized to 497 foot-pounds because we're probably not going to get it off. Oh, or just be completely finger tight. That's fine. Let's see if I can drop this now and make a mess on the floor. I'm hearing oil pouring out on the ground and it's full. So we were definitely making pressure. How do you get this out? That's the wrong direction. It's spilling on the floor. Does it go out of the bottom? No, can't. There we go. Ooh, that's an old puppy. What is it? It just says oil filter, original part. Well, this is not the same size filter, but the gasket lines up and the thread and pitch looks right. So this must be a replacement. Of course, got to run the wicks and then we're going to put the T6 in it. All the dinosaurs, vitamins, be good for this old engine. One of the many reasons I go to O'Reilly's is they always have the wick stuff in stock as well as the Shell and Rotella stuff. Where'd my grease rag go? There it is. I get the same feeling working on the boys' go-kart as this car. It's just down here. Can I even find where this plugged in now? Here maybe? That feels right. There we go. Uh-oh. I think we got some cooling hoses about ready to pop on this. Just gonna pretend I didn't see that and look this way. Whoops. Ah, it's kind of like wax. You just buffer out of there. Guys had this lift for like, what, almost a year now? I just recently discovered that it's got these nice sliding drip pans included with it. Drip panage, where'd them go? Drain panage. Is that gonna fit? Oh boy, she's tight. All right, what size is that? Leatherman? Ah, nope, it's play script size. Ooh, that bugger was on there. There we go. Is this magnetic? I don't know. We'll pretend it is, and there's nothing on it. Great news. Well, I'm not seeing anything in the oil that's alarming. Especially at the end, you can usually get some good stuff, you know. But there's no metal flakes or 
Legos or rocks or anything like that. So good news. Let's fill it back up. Well, this book of deceit didn't tell me what kind of capacities we got on the oil. So we're just going to go with all of it. Looks similar to a 302 pan. It's got to take at least four quarts, so we'll start there. I still want to try to drive this tonight, but we're running out of daylight, so we got to escalate this to code brown. It's kind of like red, but you know, we don't have to move fast because that's no one wants to do that. I got my gas rig set up here. This lines off my brake bleeder. That should be fine. We'll slip that onto this electro digital pump up here. And I can hook that into my rig. And we're just going to go straight to hitting this with some fuel and see if we can keep her idling and whatnot. Chances are the needle's stuck in there and we'll have to adjust on it a little bit. We'll try the brakes, maybe pour some juice in there. I guess I got to see if that pedal even moves. Felt really firm with my hand. That's plugged in. This plugged in. This comes over here. Now I hit the switch. Got a fuel pump. There goes the fuel. Massive leak. It's still leaking. What about now? No, it's still, I think I gotta do something. That means, well, is it the hose? I can't believe it. Let me bring this back here. How about now? Still, it's still, still leaking. How about now? It's still. It's still wanting to leak on a guy. Well, I just ran her down on the ground for now. You know, we'll ignore that. Did clean off the paint here a little bit, goodness. All right, let's try this again. Okay, we're off, we got something. Here we go. Doubt we have accelerator pump. I don't think so. Remember that battery that's been bad like 16 times? It's, it's bad again. Well, I pulled the one out of the Lasabinator. Let's try her again. Wow. I think we even have an accelerator pump. Kind of idling. That's pretty impressive. Wonder, can a guy get the idle up? Just scoosh. I don't know, I scoosh the idle. Let's try it again. Gonna grab some coolant and I guess we'll fire it back up, start dumping some of that in, see if the radiator leaks any. I don't know. There's a couple questionable hoses in here, like this one back here. 
the outside is completely peeled off so I don't know if any of these hoses are gonna last and this one looks pretty bad too this one's clearly been replaced but she's been rubbing on this hose clamp in there but with any luck it'll hold some coolant and it won't heat up and we can be driving this pretty quick yep well I seem to have lost spark it's got a really loose connection on this lightning can over here let me pinch that down I think that might have been it Smoke is kind of picking up again in the back. I'm not going to be too worried about that yet though. These rings, I'm sure, are going to need a little time to come in. Well, this is acting like it's full. I don't know. Maybe it is. Now it's gone. so far all that old oil is burning off really stinky let's check the headlights okay and then this one here oh no way oh we got both of them what about tail lips nope so that side that's the smoky side. Shooting a bunch of rust and other stuff out of there as well. getting really hot. I'm gonna have to shut it down and uh, see if I can figure out what's going on. Well guys, I'm gonna keep poking around on the cooling system here. Currently a heating system. Great. The carbon monoxide in here is violent and dangerous. Really bringing the lungs back around. Most likely a stuck thermostat. Pretty common when rigs sit this long. And thankfully, that's way up front in here, buried. Extremely difficult to get to. I also checked the crankcase, the oil there, you know. See if there's any coolant in there. Guy starts to thinking, maybe this is why it was parked. It runs awfully good and really solid car, unless someone was just trying to tuck it away to save on it, but you'd think they'd be scooting around in it somehow. I'm also filling up both the reservoirs back there. No idea which one's the clutch and which one's the woe pedal, but I'm gonna put juice in both and just start going to town on them. Nothing's gonna happen, but I could say I tried. Brake best, rebuild my brakes. I don't think that's a real thing, but maybe it could be. Is it going in there? I think it is. I'll just keep, no, it's definitely, it's not as spilling. Well, whichever reservoir is in the back, either the reservoir is cracked or the line, something's wrong or the cylinder is shot, either end here or who it's really leaking so basically one of the two are going to work and the other is not i'm hoping i have a clutch i don't really need brakes just going to try to scoot around the shop here it's still cooling down i'm going to try to fire it back up that way i could see if i made any difference basically i just beat the water neck housing 
just like a cabin screen door might fix it probably not now that we got headlights i think we can maybe just you know do a thing definitely stuck. I just kept wrapping on it right here and uh, all of a sudden I got a bunch of air and junk so hopefully it'll start circulating now and start cooling down a little bit. You see there it's getting towards a very hot end again. Might have to shut it down if it doesn't start coming back down. Still smoky, still pretty darn hot, but look at this. I'll be dead. That works. And the old UPM works, but I ain't got dash lights. It's funny, you can hear the alternator stall down when the charging whirler kicks in. Well, I can hear it's pretty hot. I can also feel some air moving through here. So that's an issue. Thermostat housing and all that's going to have to come off, but I just ain't got the time this time. So I think I'm just going to get the fuel tank on here somehow, clean up a little bit, and let's take this thing for its first cruise in 29 years. Boy, it is tremendously smoky in here. Let's see if I got any pedal edge. Oh, 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 foot went through the floor. Brakes, rock solid, can't move them. Clutch, absolutely nothing. So, everything I'm used to and more. Oh, foot's bound up. There we go. Well, you know, it's... We're ready, I think. This will just hang out here. That's magnetized onto that. I think I got the wiring fixed for the key. Yeah, that's good. It's cooled down again. Okay, so let's kind of, we'll just do that. Sure, okay. So I should be able to just come out, flip my fuel pump on, squeeze in, fire it up and go. I'm just gonna wheel her outside here and I think I just gotta start it in gear. We'll just start here and head down between the barns and if all goes well we'll shoot the gap over here between the lasabinator and the dumpster and maybe even swing right back in or who knows. Maybe we'll go for two laps. Could be 12. We'll see how long it takes to overheat I guess. All right. Fuel pumps on. Here we go. Okay. Gear. Oh, it doesn't even really shift. I can't. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Get the headlights on. Here we go. steering can't be no one must be oh she runs pretty good actually oh got the ford pickup there 
Get out of the way if you're in the way. Oh. Where's the dumpster? There it is. You feel the horsepowers? Boy, this would be a fun little car. Had a feller had a clutch and all. I can't believe that drinker side front tire's hanging in there. There's two of them. Sixty UPMs out of it. That's pretty good, I think, right? I think that equates to like 14 liters or something, or all of the RPM. Oh, jeez. Okay. The old door just kind of ejectoed on me. I can't see the heat gauge, but I can sure smell that it's not hot. White? Yeah, so I think we're doing pretty good. Whoa, what are you doing there, door? Get back here, you little stinker. Well, there we go. First cruise in 29 years. It's doing just fine. Can I turn around and come in the other way and just park it? That would be convenient. Yeah, let me come over here and then swing this way. Fuel tank's holding in there. No, I got clearance over there. Well, I gotta get the key ready. Oh, she pulled out of here. Oh, yeah. Well, this 1974 Saab Sinet 3 has got a new lease on life. Almost 30 years of us taking a nap and we brought her right back around with minimal effort really. That wasn't too bad at all. Such a neat, cool car. I'm glad that we were able to save another one from rotting into just a parts car or worse, headed to the scrapyard. If you guys want to see more foreign cars, makes, models, odd things like this, let me know. Put her down there in the bleep bloop section. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it very much and we'll see you next time.